I just beat the final boss known as Annihilation, and I did it with this weapon. It's called the Merciless. Such a fitting name for it indeed, simply because that's precisely what it exemplifies. This actually is an average weapon, but with an added amulet becomes unbelievably strong. Hey, what's going on y'all? Let's be righteous again. And if you love bleed builds as much as I do, then today is your lucky day. I have arguably the best one in the game. Don't worry. I'll explain exactly how you can get everything you need to make this for yourself. But first, I have a disclaimer that I'd like to provide because Remnant 2, for those of you who aren't familiar, has a procedural generation system, whereas in some cases your personal story progression may not even lead you to the boss fight that grants you this weapon along with the insane amulet to go with it. But here's how you get it. By defeating the Corrupted Ravager. It's not an easy fight, but it's doable. Once you do, you can then go craft it at the ward. And I'm so glad that I got it on my first playthrough because I increased the difficulty after rerolling my campaign and I know I'm going to need it for that. Here's what it does. It's classed as a long gun and it's a bleed weapon that fires tooth like fletchets. When the weapon reticle is fully compressed, fletchets apply 250 bleeding damage over 10 seconds. This is considered a boss weapon so the mod cannot be changed. It's called Bloodline. It fires a devastating blast which penetrates through all enemies in its path. It deals 150 damage with a 25% critical damage bonus and a 3 times additional stagger. So this pretty much staggers anything. Bloodline damage is increased by 50% for each enemy penetrated. So if you penetrate 3 enemies that's 150% damage increase. The mob power requirement is only 350 which means these become active back to back. It's an automatic weapon and when you're firing is when the mod stacks are generated and by that time the enemy is bleeding and when you're ready you can activate bloodline this thing deals insane damage to anything it doesn't discriminate which is why i used it for the final boss plus shielded enemies and groups are perfect for this mod it demolishes anything like that now once it's fully compressed that's when the enemy bleeds and this is a multi-faceted playstyle. and in regards to the status effects in remnant 2 in particular the bleed it's always one of the best advantages to have at any time. Statuses are very strong in this game. They offer passive damage that is vital during tough fights. Like when I was fighting Annihilation, he rarely gave me time to stop and shoot. So once I got those stacks up, the bleed is applied over 10 seconds. Then activate Bloodline whenever you're comfortable. But I'm not finished with the amount of damage you can deal on this build, especially while the enemy is bleeding. Because the Merciless is an average weapon, like I said, without this amulet so let's talk about it and the rings one in particular that will set this build apart and what cemented it as being the hardest hitting bleed build in remnant 2 is this amulet called ravager's mark if you don't have this you can use chains of amplification which deals less damage but when i think of this amulet the ravager's mark i can't help but to think of the infamous predator's mark from the division comment below if you know what i'm talking about anyways this amulet is amazing to say the least Here's what it does. Increases all damage dealt to bleeding targets by 20%. Bonus increases to 30% for targets with 50% or lower health. So basically when they're nearing towards the end of their health, it helps you along to melt them even faster. I got so lucky getting this. And let me tell you a quick story that you're going to want to hear. After rerolling my campaign over and over, I was never able to get back to the Ravager's lair. That's how random the biomes can get. So. If you get something that's really good, then cherish it because it's very hard to get that opportunity twice. Now, since I couldn't get back there, I thought I'd never get the amulet, but I ended up joining a random group that just so happened to be on the cutscene right before they were asked by the Ravager to make a choice. This is how you get the amulet, by the way, because he gives you a choice. Take sides with him by sacrificing the dough or do this. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm not with that whole devil worship sacrifice type ish. So I attacked him, which ultimately ended up giving me the Merciless when I beat him. But back to the story. So when I joined this random group during the cutscene, I had to hope and pray these guys would decide to kill the doe. Feel our pact. Radiation of this pest. This Kill the doe. Kill the doe. Yes.
life, there will always be death. Let's see what happens. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my god, they just gave it to me. Let's go. And they did. I couldn't believe it. So you know that means this build was destined to come out. And I don't think this build's damage will be complete without this combo, honestly. There are still more rings that I'd like to get to help with bleed more, like this one called the Blood Jewel charged melee attacks apply bleed dealing 460 bleed damage over 20 seconds now that's even more than what the merciless does this you can get in yesha at the lost temple which is what i'm working on right now also the assassin's dagger that is a necessity to have as a melee weapon which also does something with bleed because remember i said that i increased my difficulty and if i want to increase it even more this build has to evolve more at this point i think that it's ready for veteran i think that i'm good here i'm comfortable of course i have to keep my wits about me and not get hit as much but that's just the normalcy that comes with increased difficulties overall but for a veteran it's dealing enough damage trust me but here's the other rings that i'm using one is called the blood tinged ring you gain two health regeneration per second when within 10 meters of a bleeding entity this is great for survivability when in the midst of enemies bleeding and the other rings are to help with this archetype combo i got going the deep pockets ring for more ammo reserves added on to what the gunslinger already has and two other rings black stamp and burden of the rebel which accumulatively grant me 25 percent skill cooldown now here's how it all ties together meet the loaded peacemaker an archetype combo of gunslinger and medic dps with sustainability the perfect balance i'd say first off let me say that there is one thing i do not like about the merciless and that's the terrible reload it has is precisely why I'm using the Gunslinger as the primary archetype. Because its prime perk is called Loaded. It instantly reloads both weapons and you temporarily gain infinite ammo reserves, which means any ammo used in that time is not lost. But this is really crazy. The two rings that grant me 25% skill cooldowns make the quick draw skill only 22 seconds as opposed to 32. So I never shy away from using this skill whenever I need it because it comes right back. So here's the strategy. Whenever the Merciless's ammo is depleted, I don't reload with it. I use the quick draw to deal some insane DPS while not worrying about the slow reload it has. This way I'm right back in the fight. This essentially makes the Merciless have no weaknesses. I'm assuming the reload is its only weakness because everything else about this is OP. I haven't unlocked all the skills yet, but quick draw just seems like the perfect skill for this build and weapon right now. I'll try the others out and see how they work later. But having the medic as my secondary just makes sense. The trait for it increases healing by 30% and you can support your team as well with skills, either wellspring or healing shield. One more thing about the merciless, the fletchets that shoot out don't automatically hit the enemy you're aiming at. They have some travel time, which means that you could miss more times than not if you don't lead your shots correctly. So just remember that when trying to take enemies out, especially from a long distance. I think the Merciless has a bit of a higher skill gap than most other weapons, but that just usually means it's powerful. When it comes to the armor, I love to get the Lado armor. It's also something that's on my radar, it's something I'm on the hunt for, but for now, I have the Red Widow armor. It's actually pretty tanky, considering the other armor that's available. I got it from the Lamont dungeon doing that insane puzzle. I can make a video about it, or you can just check out YouTube where there are tons of them already, but it also has some decent bleed resistance, and check this out. I'm not using the helmet. This one right here, I'm using the Lodestone Crown. What's great about this is how much it lights up dark areas. It makes the flashlight obsolete. But yeah, if you wanna see any other remnant videos I made, then here you go. And like the video if it helped you out in any way. Also, subscribe if you're new here. Finally, comment anything you'd like to add in the section below. I appreciate you watching till the end. I'll see you in my next video. Be right out.